Once you own your architecture and you have things pretty well documented, the next thing to do is to basically train people. Because I can tell you, even though those technologists come into you very knowledgeable with their respective technology certifications within their silo, they do not come with the knowledge of your environment. And they're continually trying to make your environment look like where they came from, what was comfortable for them. So there's a continuous pressure to basically wreck your architecture all the time in order to make people who don't understand it more comfortable with it. And it's costly because they're always wanting to change out all the network management, change out all the tools, change out all the routers, all the switches, all the platforms. They're constantly wanting you to buy what they had at their last organization. Okay? Very costly. So if you can at least, when people come in, explain to them your history. Why are you where you are? What is your fingerprint of your technology? Why did you choose your vendors? It may not be the solution for the future, but if you let them know the constraints and the reasons why you did what you did at those points in, in your technology uh, evolution, then you're going to be uh, a lot further ahead. They're going to have history. Your CIO your executive management needs to understand that fingerprint. Where did you come from? You know, uh, technology-wise, were you a token ring shop, an IBM shop, were you a mainframe environment? You know, what was your technology migration and what did it look like and where are you today? So if you have architecture ownership, you have a history of that as well to share with people. So I recommend that you have a training and certification program for everyone that comes in. And as a matter of fact, if you have you know, new executives and that sort of thing, they ought to go through the program as well so they understand the technology before they start signing $2 million purchase orders, $20 million purchase orders. Wouldn't it be nice if they at least knew what you were doing and why you were doing it prior to so that even if they want to change, they're making those changes changes on informed with informed information and it's an informed decision not just you know well um, you know this wasn't working for you guys before so we're gonna move over here it's nice to have an orientation so you basically take all these diagrams and systems and your architecture ownership and you train and you certify this isn't um, a technology certification. This is a certification that belongs to your organization that you own and um, prior to getting you know the passwords for all the switches and the routers and the servers and the databases and all the different systems you just say hey you know go through a few day training course orientation on our technical architecture and then take a little test and become certified in XYZ organization architecture before they start trying to manipulate and change it. Wouldn't, doesn't that sound like pretty simple? Yeah, it is. So it's not just a matter of making sure they're Cisco certified or, or Oracle certified or you know uh, VMware certified, etc. Okay, or, or, or security certified. It's a matter of making sure that your technology people and your managers understand your architecture and your history of your architecture so that they can plug in and move forward very easily okay and make changes to that effectively also so that's my recommendation you know num number one know yourself you need to know your architecture and then you need to protect your architecture by documenting it now and and uh, Documenting your architecture uh, means that you take your top level technologist and make sure that they're knowledgeable. Otherwise, what happens is people come into the organization, they get smart, and then they leave the organization and you're left in a vacuum. They, new people come in and this takes you know a year or two for that migration. And then they, you outsource, you change vendors, attrition, uh, etc. And so this is the way that you end up looking over time. You know, you get smart and then you lose people. You get smart and then you change a contract. You get smart and things are going better. 
the better way of doing it is when you're at one of these top smart places, get all that documented into your environment. And then what happens is start training those new people that come in and during the same period of time, this right here is your competitive advantage. That is your competitive advantage because you run your architecture, you run your IT shop with smart, essential building blocks on which you do everything. I'm Bill Alderson. It was a pleasure to talk to you about architecture ownership. Stay tuned. We've got more.